For as much as Dragon Quest is a series that is almost defined by its rigid adherence to the traditions that it pioneered, be it in its turn-based gameplay, unforgettable aesthetic, or its repertoire of iconic monsters, the ways the future of the franchise has been discussed lately seems quite untraditional. Coming off the back of Dragon Quest Your Story and the Adventure of Die anime reboot, both utilising decidedly non-Dragon Quest aesthetic, and with plans for Dragon Quest XII to be darker and more adult than ever before, there's no denying that the behemoth of a franchise is spreading its wings in a new way. As much as this new direction could very well give Dragon Quest a wonderful new vigour, it's not exactly a revamp that is sorely needed like in many other video game franchises. And the more standardised and formulaic approach to Dragon Quest helps create a sense of unity between entries and spin-off branches. However, with the prospect of a mainline Dragon Quest title not resembling the many more before it, that left me to wonder, what if one of the major decisions for Dragon Quest XII was to give it a totally new art style? What if it did away with legendary manga author Akira Toriyama's iconic design altogether in order to achieve that darker and edgier tone that they're going for? Despite the series being a stalwart in an ever-changing industry as a leading example of sticking to tradition and formula, Dragon Quest surprisingly has a richer history of non-Toriyama artwork than it might seem at first glance. Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai is a manga series that began serialization in 1989 and ran until 1996 which spawned a trilogy of anime films, an anime TV series, and now a rebooted anime TV series. The former two of which utilised the art style of manga artist Koji Inada, with the reboot sporting a kind of modernised look based on Inada's blueprint. Although many of Toriyama's monster designs from the game were still used in each iteration of The Adventure of Dai, and unmistakably so, the series is quite distinct from the rest of the franchise, while still retaining the appropriate feel. The character designs clearly take inspiration from the way Toriyama designs armour and weaponry, and the fake heroes in the first episode are specifically designed to riff off pre-established aesthetics in the Dragon Quest franchise, in a brilliant bit of meta-referencing. They all fit together seamlessly here, and Inada's art style is about as different from Toriyama's as you would want to get in Dragon Quest before you reinvent the wheel. Enough to be distinct, but still cohesive and complementary to the franchise. The Adventure of Die Infinity Strash title also gives us our first real glimpse into a Dragon Quest game that doesn't utilise Toriyama's art style. While the art looks gorgeous, especially during the cutscenes, it's at the cost of the sense of tradition and adventure that Toriyama's style affords, and it's a direction best kept specifically for the Dai spin-offs. Speaking of bringing Dragon Quest into the third dimension, in the case of Dragon Quest Your Story, it's not difficult to imagine that the mixed results when transitioning Toriyama's artwork to 3D might have scared them away from using it in a feature film. And to be fair, there are numerous examples of his art style looking garishly dissonant, gruesomely hyper-realistic to its own detriment, and even just flat out compromised in order to blend in with other art styles, with the signature sharpness of many of his designs smoothed out. However, it is many of the Dragon Quest games themselves that make a great case for Toriyama's style in 3D. Whether it's the more standard designs found in Dragon Quest Heroes pre-rendered beautifully, or the more chibi designs of Dragon Quest Builders, Dragon Quest looks beautiful as it is. Except for the pre-rendered cutscenes in Dragon Quest XI, which were an utterly hideous betrayal of Toriyama's work. I don't know what the hell was going on there. Regardless, Dragon Quest Your Story abandoned the signature art style in favour of what is undeniably an absolutely gorgeous film, and many of the scenes totally justify this change of direction purely from spectacle and detail. However, there's also no denying that the departure from the franchise's established visual identity somewhat reduces Dragon Quest into a more generic fantasy adventure, with many unfavourably comparing it to a DreamWorks film. While this comparison is a little extreme, and some of the darker and more horrific elements of the film really shine, the recent example of Dragon Ball Super, Super Hero, absolutely makes a case that Toriyama's art style can transition seamlessly into 3D for a feature film. It's a shame that Dragon Quest of all franchises couldn't take advantage of the same art style. This is all of course predicated on the idea that Yuji Horii and Square Enix decide that Akira Toriyama's art can't effectively be used in darker and more mature stories which is an idea that is completely untrue, and it never has been true. Although it is much maligned, the Dragon Ball GT anime series featured much more drab environments, grittier character designs, and a much more oppressive tone than the previous two Dragon Ball anime series. 
Characters like Baby, the way he infects and transforms other characters, and the raw and more animalistic designs of things like Super Saiyan 4 have me totally convinced that Dragon Quest XII's darker tone can easily be met without changing the art style. This is doubly the case when considering just how dark and tragic some of the moments and themes of Dragon Quest XI were, even without that focused intention. Personally, as someone who grew up alongside Dragon Ball Z and whose favourite video game of all time is Dragon Quest VIII, Toriyama's art style is synonymous with adventure and whimsy for me, and I never want the series to evolve to such a point where they cast that aesthetic to one side. The simplicity of the style often betrays the grandiosity of the journey the player is going to go on, and the vibrant world that they are going to travel through is made all the more fantastical with the exaggerated proportions of the human characters or the unpredictable creatures they will slay or befriend in equal measure. There's no denying that it's cool and interesting to see these non-Toriyama outings in anime and film, where that doesn't affect the flagship game titles. But there's also no denying it'd be a lot cooler to see a Dragon Quest anime that takes advantage of its signature style. Especially since Toei Animation is already behind the adventure of Dai and Dragon Ball. Square Enix already has a long-running JRPG franchise where they can get experimental with the art style and gameplay with each iteration. That's Final Fantasy. Each entry has different gameplay, even direct sequels can play totally different from their predecessor. And then there's a ton of spin-off titles to further spread those ideas and alter their appearances each time. For me, as the years have gone on, it's what Dragon Quest has done with the so-called confines of its more traditional gameplay that has contributed to its enduring appeal. Or, to put it simply, I think that when it comes to Dragon Quest, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 